Hello everyone, welcome to this talk. I am Ritam Bhomik from India, Paris, and today I'll be talking about our paper QCB Efficient Quantum Secure Authenticated Encryption at AsiaCrypt 2021. And this is a joint work with uh, Xavier Bonta, Andre Chaillou, Geta Laurent, Maria Naya Placencia, Andre Schultendler, and Yannick Sohan. We begin with a block cipher, which is a secure uh, fixed width encryption scheme. And we want to build on top of it an authenticated encryption mode. Now, uh, what is an authenticated encryption mode? It uh, takes in an initial value IV, a message M, and some associated data A, and it computes a cipher text C and a tag T. And it comes with two promises. One is a promise of confidentiality, that is, C is indistinguishable from some random function of M, or some random permutation of M. And the other is authenticity, that CT should not be forgeable. That is, an adversary who has not queried a particular triple IVMA should not be able to produce a CT, which, um, which like, such that IVMA encrypts to CT. So this is an authentication encryption mode. Now, one way to achieve it is to handle the encryption and authentication tasks separately, like in the encrypt and MAC paradigm, where we first encrypt the message securely into a ciphertext C using some mode like the counter mode, and then we authenticate C with a secure MAC, like the NMAC or HMAC. And this gives us a secure A mode, but the problem is that it is not lightweight, it is read too. That is, we need two block cipher calls for every message block. And what we want here is a rate one A mode. That is, it, it should only spend about one block cipher call for every message block. So that is the goal here. And a popular A mode which achieves this goal, which is rate one, is the offset code book or OCB. And here we look at its uh, present variant, OCB3. So what it does is it, uh, it takes the design of the ECB, electronic code book, but before and after each block cipher call, it adds an offset. And this offset depends on the IV and it depends on the block number. But the interesting thing about OCB3 is that the uh, IV of a certain block, like the uh, offset delta of a certain block, like delta IVI, is the XOR of two components, one which comes from the IV and one which comes from the block. Now we want to examine the quantum security of uh, OCB, but uh, before that we would have to decide on a model. And in general there are two broad models uh, for examining quantum security or security against the quantum adversary. One is the classical query model where the adversary is only allowed to make classical queries to the construction, but they can do offline computations on a quantum computer. And uh, this is a very realistic scenario, but it's less powerful because you do not get any superposition access uh, to the construction. And for some cases in public key encryption, such an adversary is powerful enough to completely break the system but this is usually not the case in uh, symmetric key systems. And so far only quadratic speedups have been found or very recently a bit more than uh, quadratic, but uh, not, not something, not for instance, exponential speedups. So this is the classical query model and uh, more theoretical, but uh, like more suited to this provable security scenario is the uh, superposition query model where the adversary can do quantum computations offline, but also can access certain registers of the system quantumly, as in, uh, as in, in superposition. And this can actually allow very powerful attacks on some symmetric systems, as we'll see. 
So in this paper, we uh, consider this uh, superposition query model. And as it turns out, OCB, which is, uh, by the way, classically uh, proven to be secure, is uh, broken in the superposition query model. And uh, so before, uh, before going into that, we should specify that here we only consider the messages to be like, uh, quantumly accessible. That is, you can, the adversary can query the uh, construction with messages which are in superposition. But the IV is still considered classical because the IV is not uh, generally not controlled by the adversary. So there can be a more general model where even the IV is quantumly accessible, but we do not consider that here. Here we consider the case where the IV is always classical. Now, uh, again, if we are happy with red 2, if we do not want lightweight, then the counter plus n mac h mac mode still works. It, it gives us a, um, an AE mode, which is uh, secure in the superposition query model we just described. But uh, as mentioned before, we want a rate 1 model. And uh, so we want some way to fix OCB, to make it quantum resistant without spending extra block cipher calls. And that is what we'll explore in the rest of this paper. Now, uh, so one of the very important tools in these superposition query models to attack and break symmetric systems is the Simons algorithm. And uh, what it does is that given a periodic function f, that is a function with some hidden period s, such that f of x, x or s, is always equal to fx. And given some uh, superposition query access to such a function f, Simon's attack can recover the secret period s in polynomial time. And this is something that cannot be done in a classical scenario. And this, uh, this gives us access to some new attacks, some uh, very interesting attacks on symmetric systems. For instance, on OCB3. Now, it's uh, not unnatural that OCB3 cipher designed with a uh, classical adversary in mind will have uh, will leave vulnerabilities such as hidden periods because it is usually not a vulnerability when the adversary is uh, just classical. And uh, as it turns out, in OCB3, there are hidden periods everywhere. So, for instance, in the ciphering part, if we take uh, the encryption of the two equal message blocks and then exhort the outputs, it gives us an fx with a hidden period uh, of uh, delta 0, xor delta 1. And uh, this happens because uh, this, this period would actually have been delta 0 iv, xor delta 1 iv. But as mentioned before, uh, this uh, delta 0 iv is just the xor of delta iv and delta 0. So the delta iv part cancels out from the two offsets and we are just left with delta 0 x or delta 1, which is not dependent on the IV. Thus, we can just repeatedly query this and then use Simon's attack to recover delta 0 x or delta 1. And even if we do not uh, look at the ciphering part, we can just look at the tag part instead and uh, query it with an empty message. And, uh, and to uh, equal AD blocks, and then we, we can see that uh, fx, the output, the tag x, is uh, has a component which is dependent on the IV, but then it has this function which is, the rest of it is this function which has this hidden period of delta 0 x or delta 1. Now this is not strictly periodic because if you cannot repeat the IV, then this function changes each time and uh, for, the, for each different IV. But for Simon's attack, it's sufficient that the period is uh, constant. And uh, how it works is by sampling vectors orthogonal to the period. And so uh, Simon's attack can still be used in this case to recover delta 0 x or delta 1. And uh, so just to uh, mention that why is this an attack? Because once you have delta 0 x or delta 1, it's very simple to make a forgery. We can just take any two blocks, a0, a1, which, are, which do not x or to delta 0 x or delta 1. And uh, then for some IV and some M, we can query IV A0A1M to get some CT. And then we can swap A0 and A1 
bring a1 to the first block, a0 to the second block, but uh, and then add to each this difference, delta 0x or delta 1. And it's easy to check that this is, a, uh, then CT is a valid forge for this particular triple IV, and a1x or delta 0x or delta 1, a0x or delta 0x or delta 1, and M. So, uh, with this, uh, is where once this uh, sum of offsets has been recovered, it's quite easy to attack OCB3. Now, um, it, it may uh, seem that the real problem here is uh, that this delta 0 IV, X or delta 1 IV, is independent of IV, because the IV components get cancelled out. And uh, one attempt to fix this could be just to make this delta 0 IV, uh, so th just to make this uh, XOR of the two offsets IV dependent. For instance, we can take uh, delta 0 IV to be I uh, dot uh, EK IV. And then this same attack doesn't work because IV changes each time. But we show in this paper that this construction is still vulnerable to a similar attack because we can, uh, so in the same query, we can take these non overlapping pairs I1, I2, for instance, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, up to n minus 1n, and take the same x there, so x1 equals, so m1 equals m2, m3 equals m4, and so on, and then we take this x source, c1, x or c2, c2, c3, x or c4, and with this we can find vectors, like using Simon's uh, algorithm, we can find vectors which are orthogonal to uh, these, uh, these differences here, the periods of these functions, c1, x or c2, and so on, and with this, we can find enough uh, data to solve for EKIV. So this is uh, one of the first uh, results we find in this paper because the earlier attacks are already were already well known. Uh, so this is not enough to fix OCB. And uh, what we can guess from here is that it is the offsets which is the problem here. I mean, so Simon is very powerful against many kinds of offsets and it's uh, quite difficult to fix this without changing this very structure of adding the offsets. And we can turn instead to theta CB. So what is uh, theta CB? So this is OCB3, but here we can abstract out this entire middle part of uh, this uh, XORing the offset and then passing through the block cipher call and XORing the offset again. And we can say that this is a tweakable block cipher where this offset acts as a tweak. And uh, this is actually used, so this theta CB name is given by the uh, authors of the OCB paper and they use it as an intermediate construction for the proof of uh, OCB3. But uh, what we can say is that theta CB itself does not have so many problems, uh, but uh, so we can say that we use theta CB but we do not use these offsets, we do not, we process the tweak differently, we do not use them as offsets and that is, uh, that is the direction we, we look for uh, trying to fix OCB. And so we come up with QCB, which is the, I mean, which is the construction we propose in this paper. And in the encryption part, this is actually similar to theta CB and we assume for now this uh, E tilde is a, a secure, quantumly secure tweakable block cipher, and I'll explain soon what I mean by that. So, uh, this encryption part of QCB is the same as theta CB, because uh, I mean uh, this is secure enough. Here. But for the tag part, there is an important change. Uh, in OCB3, we do not use the IV for uh, getting the tags. They are processed with these offsets, which are not dependent on IVs. And uh, but here we need the IVs uh, to go into the tweaks for the for processing the associated data. So this is one important change, and th so this is the QCB construction. Now we turn to uh, proving its security, and before that we have to define its security, which is one of the tricky bits. So first we need a secure TVC. Now what, we, what do we mean by that? So ideally, a quantum secure TVC should withstand the following game where the adversary is trying to distinguish EKT from a family of random permutations, pi t. And uh, the tweak inputs are classical, but the messages are superposed. 
but these classical tweaks can be chosen adaptively. So there is no restriction on that. This is the ideal TBC, ideal definition of TBC. And uh, uh, then with this, when we instantiate the QCB with this ideal TBC, we can make the following claims. In confidentiality, we can show an int QCPA uh, security. What do we mean by that? So in the int QCPA game, uh, there is a query phase where the adversary makes Q encryption queries with adaptive classical IVs and some MA which can be in superposition. And then there is a challenge phase where the adversary has to distinguish between the encryptions of two classical messages. And this part is important. So this, in the challenge, the challenges have to be classical. And for authenticity, we use the Bonizandri uh, definition, where in the query phase, the adversary makes Q encryption queries with again with adaptive classical IVs and MA possibly in superposition. And in the forging phase, the adversary must output Q plus one valid tuples AIVCT. Mm, this is the bonus on the definition. And we can uh, show that uh, QCB achieves uh, both these goals when instantiated with an ideal TBC. And uh, how do we prove that? Well, uh, first we <coughs> replace all the tweakable block ciphers with ideal random permutations and which are independent for, in, for different tweaks. And then it's uh, simple to argue because in confidentiality, since the IVs are not repeated, when we move on to the challenge phase and uh, so the uh, permutations which appear in the challenge phase uh, do not appear in the query phase and their outputs have, are independent of anything, any information the adversary may obtain in the query phase. So the yeah, adversary can never guess better than random. And for authenticity, we can uh, say that um, we can uh, we actually classify this uh, forging attempt, this Q plus one uh, tuple which uh, the adversary at, I mean submits as a forging attempt, and we classify it based on whether it contains a new IV or a new cipher text block or a new some new associated data. And in each case, we show that one of the two must be true that either the adversary produces an input-output pair for some random permutation which it has never queried, or the adversary produces two input-output pairs for random permutation which has only been queried once. And we can claim that both of these are uh, difficult to do better than uh, a random guess. And uh, this uh, gives us a proof of the, the security of a QCB when, with ideal TBC. But uh, we, are, we want to make it, uh, I mean, we want to go further because an ideal TBC may not be rate one. And for instance, there is a, um, there is a construction by Hosu Yamada and Iwata which, uh, which needs three block cipher calls for every TBC call. But this does not help us because if we instantiate QCB with a TBC which uh, does not, which spends more than one block cipher call for every TBC call, then QCB does not remain rate one any anymore, and uh, our original purpose is defeated. So we want to look for a TBC which is rate one, and we found the key tweak insertion TBC where the tweak is, is just XOR with the key, and this in many cases is not a very ideal construction for a TBC, but we find that it serves our purpose very well. Mm, but so and uh, now we need to prove the security of this TBC, but unfortunately we could not prove its ideal TBC security, which we promised before. And instead we prove its security under a slightly more restrict restrictive condition, where the tweaks are non-adaptive. So the adversary has to uh, like declare a set of tweaks uh, beforehand, and then uh, the rest of the game is the same. Like, uh, but uh, this. This is the only restriction we need. And since this is not an ideal TBC, we also modify the security goals of QCB accordingly. And in fact, in this TBC security definition, we make one other small claim, small change, but I'll come to that later. So for the QCB security, the modified goals look as follows. Like uh, there is this modified int QCPA where 
the IVs are either random or specified in adverse, advance. So they are not adversary uh, controlled. And uh, the query phase and challenge phase are as before. And then we, for authenticity, we have the modified VZ definition where again the IVs are either random or specified in advance. And uh, then the query phase and forging phase are before. So we make these modifications to take into account our modified uh, security goal of uh, security def, I mean, um, our modified security of the TBC we are using to instantiate this particular QCB. So here, just to clarify, we are talking about QCB when instantiated with the key to weak insertion uh, TBC. And how do we prove this security? Well, uh, it mostly follows the proof for the ideal TBC case. We can show that once, I mean, once we put this restriction on the IVs, it's, uh, we can just reduce it to you know, the security of the TBC under our modified definition. But there is one caveat. And as you recall, for proof of BZ, we need, uh, we need to verify the forging attempts. And uh, for that, we'll need additional TBC queries, and which may be with fresh tweaks, which are not declared in advance. So this is not strictly captured by the non-adaptive tweak scenario we discussed before. But for this, we can just make a simple uh, change that after the, at the, in the TBC security game, after the quantum query phase, there is a classical query phase where there is a, where the adversary can ask a number of classical queries, which non-adaptively, of course, because the forging attempts have to be made all at once. But uh, this can use tweaks which are not predeclared, so which can be, which do not belong to the predeclared list. So we make this definition, and with that, uh, we can prove this uh, modified case, like the modified BZ for QCB. So that is the uh, that is all uh, we find in this paper. So, in conclusion, what we show is that if the TBC is perfect, if it's ideal, then QCB has this full in QCB security and BZ authenticity, um, and it's also rate one. But we did not. Uh, we did not manage to instantiate it with some TBC because we could not uh, prove this ideal uh, quantum security for our TBC, our rate one TBC. Mm. So instead, uh, we show that with the modified definition where the tweaks are predeclared, then QCB has this modified uh, in QCB and BZ securities. And uh, these, but these are these all follows the follow the ideal cipher model. So we do not have any results in the standard model. So that is all we found in this paper. And uh, there are several open questions. For instance, can we properly define in QCCA security for AE? And then can we maybe explore in QCCA security of uh, RET1 constructions like QCB? And um, can we uh, say something about the BU authenticity, which is the blind unforgeability and the more recent uh, definition, but uh, so can we say anything about BU's, BU unforgeability of return constructions? And of course, uh, can we prove uh, that the key tweak insertion is uh, like has full quantum security, like we don't know, we need the adaptive uh, tweak case. And if we can show that, then QCB is shown to be fully in QCB and uh, BZ secure without the modifications. And finally, uh, can we say anything without the ideal cipher model, like about the quantum secure TVC or the red one parallelizable A? So that is all. Thank you for listening to this uh, recorded talk. And uh, uh, the full version of this paper can be found in on ePrint. And uh, maybe see you at Asia Crypt. Thank you. <laughs>